So my first slide um, is just kind of a brief overview of what NI is. Um, so as everybody knows, colostrum is full of helpful antibodies for the foal, but there can also be some dangerous antibodies in there. Um, so with NI, the foal is destroying red blood cells because of anti-red blood cell antibodies that are found in the mare's colostrum. Um, without preventative measures, we see this in about 1 to 2 percent of foals, and it has a 25 percent fatality rate even with aggressive hospitalization. Um, so some of the signs you want to look for, we see it in foals that are 5 hours to 5 days of age, um, and they'll be weak or lethargic, have a high respiratory and heart rate, and yellow mucous membranes and sclera, and red urine. Um, the red urine and yellow mucous membranes are due to the breakdown of red blood cells, and if you see a foal with yellow mucous membranes, it's really only NI, um, and that's why it's also known as jaundice foal. So there are kind of four steps that have to be met in order for a foal to develop NI. Um, the first is that the mare has to be bred to a stallion with a different blood type. So if your stallion is blood type AC and your mare is blood type AC, there's no chance that your foal can develop NI. Um, the second step is that the foal has to have a different blood type from the dam. So even if your stallion is blood type ACU and your mare is blood type AC, if the foal is blood type AC, the foal can't um, develop NI. Third, the mare has to produce anti-red blood cell antibodies against the foal's blood type. So this means that the mare has to have been exposed to a foreign blood type at some point in her life. Um, most commonly, mares get exposed from a previous pregnancy, but if she's had a previous blood transfusion or maybe gotten a bad batch of plasma, that can also um, cause her to produce anti-red blood cell antibodies. Um, and the fourth step is that the foal has to ingest colostrum and absorb anti-red blood cell antibodies. So what can we do to prevent NI? So this is kind of the main question. Um, first is pre-foaling blood testing we can do. There's kind of two blood tests that we have available to us. Um, the first is an antibody screen. This has to be done in late gestation. The mare has to have a little bit of an udder. Um, and this looks for antibodies in the mare's systemic bloodstream against foreign blood types, specifically A, C, Q, and U. Um, it's important to test all mares, including maidens. I actually had a maiden mare a few weeks ago that had anti-Q and anti-U antibodies. Um, we don't know why, but we definitely did not let that full nurse. Um, and positive screens are more common in mares that have had several foals. Again, we think that the mares get exposed to a previous foal's blood type, either during late gestation or parturition, and then develop antibodies. Um, a little side note, I'm sure a lot of you have seen antibody screens come back with anti-C. It's actually very common in thoroughbreds, but is not a problem. Um, they've done studies where they fed anti-C colostrum to foals and have done serial um, blood measurements in those foals, and the two groups of foals are completely um, the same. So we don't really understand why that is, but the take-home message is if you get an anti-C antibody screen back, you can let the foal nurse normally. Um, the second pre-foaling blood test that we can do is blood typing. You can do this at any time. So if you bring a maiden home from the track and want to go ahead and blood type her, you can do that. Um, and this just kind of helps determine your risk. So the A blood type is found in 98% of thoroughbreds. So if you have a mare that's blood type CQ, you know she's already at a higher risk for having an NI foal because chances are the stallion will have the A blood type. Um, you can also perform blood typing on a stallion. So if you have a mare that has anti-U antibodies, it might be worth testing the stallion because only 9% of thoroughbreds have the U blood type, so there's a good chance that the stallion won't. And if the mare doesn't have the U blood type and the stallion doesn't have the U blood type, even though the mare has the antibodies, you can treat the foal as normal. You don't have to hold it off the mare. Um, and then post foaling management, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, but that basically just centers on keeping the foal from ingesting that colostrum until um, it's all milked out. Um, and one test you can do at that point is a cross match um, that tells you when the foal can nurse. And it just looks for a reaction between antibodies in the mare's colostrum and the foal's blood. So why do we still see cases of NI? Um, most commonly, the foal escapes the muzzle at some point. Um, but we also have reports in the literature of rare blood types. Um, we don't test for them because they're super uncommon, but if you have a case of NI and you know the foal hasn't escaped the muzzle, that's always a possibility. Um, so the take-home message is that even though it's estimated that NI occurs in 1 to 2% of equine births, we see a lot fewer cases than that. Um, I looked through our hospital records, and we only had six cases in the last several years out of hundreds of foals we've treated. So between the antibody screens and the good post-foaling management, I think we do a pretty good job of preventing NI. 